Hi everybody and welcome to my brief presentation on macro microcoupling with Precise. This presentation is going to be an outlook on what will happen the next years. Um, because there is a new project that we are about to start named Adaptive and Flexible Macro Microcoupling Software. Um, the project is going to be funded by Simtech, um, the cluster of excellence in Stuttgart. Well, actually it's um, still under external review, but what I'm going to present you today is going to happen the one or the other way. Um, the project is going to run for three years and um, the main working force will be Ishan Desai as a doctoral candidate, um, here depicted on the very left. And in the middle you see Karina Bringedal, who will um, yeah, join the project as a co-PI besides myself. Multiscale coupling in general will be a hot topic for Precise in the coming years. Our research focus here is again on black box coupling. So we want to make multiscale coupling as black box as possible. For the very similar reasons that we are already interested in black box coupling today. Um, we want to make it as easy as possible to exchange um, existing components and to couple new codes. Multiscale coupling has many, many facets. So actually the term is used in many different ways in literature. So in the end, what we're going to target are also very different things. Um, to give you one example, um, one kind of multiscale coupling we already target today um, is waveform iteration. Um, so how to treat different time discretizations, different time scales, um, if you want to learn more about this, uh, Benjamin Rotenberg gave a nice talk last year at the workshop. Um, you can still find the talk on YouTube. Um, there is a paper um, on a multiscale computing in the exascale era, which discusses and compares different general multiscale computing patterns for HPC. Um, in this paper, the authors um, compare and discuss three patterns. The first pattern is extreme scaling. Here you have one single scale model that is so expensive that it requires exascale performance. And then this one model is coupled to other cheap single scale models. Another reason why you need HPC for multiscale is heterogeneous multiscale computing. Here you have a very large number of microscale models which are coupled to one macroscale model. So here it's the sheer number of, mic of microscale simulations um, that need exascale computing. And finally there is replica computing. Here you have a large number of copies of one simulation. A typical example is uncertainty quantification. Um, I put the middle one here in boldface because this is the one we want to target um, in this new project. Uh, what is good is that um, this paper also claims that HPC software for this type of coupling is still rare. So this is where Precise enters the picture. So what kind of applications do we want to target in the proposed project? Three characteristics. First, the two coupled models live on the same time scale. So we have no multiscale problem in time. In general, they could also use um, time stepping. Then we're going to need an iterative coupling per time step. So this is the classical implicit coupling of precess. And finally, um, this is where it gets challenging, we're going to need some adaptivity on the micro simulations level. This means we do not want to simulate each and every micro scale simulation um, because that would be far too expensive. We only want to simulate those micro simulations 
where there are exciting things happening in the overall simulation. Or to put it differently, uh, it could be that um, several micro simulations are very similar to each other. And then in this case, we only want to simulate one simulation out of this um, group. Yes. So um, in the project, we're going to target um, three different examples. Um, the first one is more kind of a um, test application for us. Here we want to simulate heat conduction in a classical Fe squared approach. Um, on both levels, we're going to use new tools for this. Then we want to target porous media flow. Here we're going to couple um, the REV Darcy scale, for example, simulated with open foam or with Dumux, um, to micro fluid simulations uh, in a microstructure simulated with again noodles or Dumux. And last, we want to target muscle simulations where we couple. 3D structural mechanics on the macro level, for example in Alestina or in a Stuttgart-based code called OpenDHU, to 1D fibers um, again in OpenDHU. So what exactly is a macro micro coupling and how can we do this with precise? Well, macro micro means that we have one macro simulation here on the left and you see the mesh here of the macro simulation. And then in each cell of the macro simulation, we're going to have one micro simulation. Um, and those are depicted here on the right. Now you see active micro simulations in black and inactive ones in gray. And this is exactly the adaptivity I just talked about. And this adaptivity can change in every time step. Okay, so how will we do this? Um, well, in the end, uh, in this project, we will develop a new component, a new software uh, with the working title Micromanager. So in this picture here, the Micromanager is everything within these dotted lines here. So the Micromanager um, handles and organizes all micro simulations. In particular, it handles the adaptivity and it will run in parallel. That means with adaptivity, we will also need to treat load balancing. And then this micromanager is um, coupled over the volume to the macro simulation. And for that, we're gonna use precise as it is. The micromanager, we probably gonna um, develop in Python. Um, why do I mention this? Because this has an impact here. Because we will do something that normally we tell people not to do. We will work with a framework approach. This means the micromanager calls the micro simulations. And that means that all the micro simulations need to be libraries. So let's look at the same thing, but now from the perspective of the micro simulations. The micro simulations need to be rewritten as libraries. That means they need to get an API. Um, and that API now needs to be in Python. So that means that either the complete micro simulation needs to be in Python or the micro code needs to have an needs to have bindings in Python. The API itself, um, we have not yet defined. So this will happen early in the project. And last, um, the micro simulations gonna need a way how to serialize and deserialize. This is something we're gonna need for the load balancing. Um, because for the load balancing, we wanna send complete micro simulations from one compute node to another. This sounds very complicated, but actually it is not. If your micro simulation already has a checkpoint restart mechanism, that's basically all that we're going to need. I'm already coming to the end of this short presentation. 
And as a last thing, I want to tell you about the timeline of the project. I told you before that we're about to kick off the project and our rough plan is that till the end of this year we have a first working prototype. So a sequential version, but already a first definition of the API. Um, full functionality, but of course very slow. So in principle, um, you could already work with the micromanager um, next year. That's why we are looking for early adopters next year. And I'm pretty sure that many of you have such macro micro coupled problems that you want to simulate. Then um, in the next two years of the project, we're going to focus more on the optimization. So end of um, 2022, we want to have a first parallel version with an a priori load balancing. And at the end of 2023, we want to have the first um, real release uh, with all the optimization. So with uh, load balancing and with um, that's one uh, small work package in precise with an optimized volume communication as well. That's all I wanted to tell you about macro micro coupling. For sure, um, throughout the next years, we will tell you more about this project and keep you posted how things go. For the moment, thank you very much for listening in.